All right, welcome back to Two Stupid Guys Trade Stocks. I'm Vinny. I'm Dylan. And uh, we, got, we got a little interesting one for you. Not only are we talking about Dylan swing trade picks this week, we got a couple of news articles kind of involved as well because you know his swing trade picks are you know, a little bit involved with some news stuff that happened this week. Yeah, we're slightly breaking the rule of, of fundamentalism with technical analysis, but a lot of stuff happened this week. So. Yeah, yeah, it was a pretty crazy week in the stock market. So these are the tickers we're we'll be talking about today. Usual disclaimer: This channel is called Two Stupid Gas Trade Stocks. If you follow us into any of these trades, you <laughs> very well may lose money. Uh, you do so at your own risk. And Dylan breaks down his uh, swing trades in three different risk tiers: low, medium, and high. We'll add a link up above here about uh, uh, Dylan's how to swing trade video, which basically has his rules that when you scenarios doesn't play out and when you, when you should just avoid it. So here's a couple big ones popping on stock twits for you, Dylan. You love this, don't you? Stock twits. Yeah, I'm not super this week. AMC still going ridiculous. There's not really any like crazy news. Um, I did find out that you know the free popcorn they offered. Yeah, it's actually a free refill. Oh, great. Um, which is funny because like my theater chain here, Harkins, mm -hmm. already already does that. I love it. And yeah, kind of messed up. But uh, the other one is called Torchlight Energy Resources. Have you heard of this? No, I have not. So it's only got a 12% short float, but Wall Street Bets found them. It's a more complex than their typical, I'm going to boost the stock. But basically, they're merging with a company called Metamaterial uh, so that they can get a U.S. listing. Torchlight isn't going to exit their entire business plan and just do everything that meta material is doing um this is kind of old news but it's all, almost like a spock yeah with a company <laughs> that's kind what i was weird. thinking yeah <laughs> yeah and then um they also announced a hundred million share sale and then a dividend and that the deal will be done soon so it's going crazy if you want to go to the chart real quick yeah so it's you know I, I don't ever swing stuff like this because to me this is just it's just gambling. Um, but you know, had you done that, it, I'm still working out the kinks on that strategy involving meme stocks with the volume. Mm -hmm. But you know, had you done it, it actually would have worked both times here because here your volume anomaly would have been here, and then your volume anomaly would have been here. You would have been up uh, both times, barely here though. It would not be worth it. So. Yeah. I would exit because this is terrifying, but you guys do you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah. I'm not surprised that there's nothing in the low to medium category this week for you, Dylan. It's uh, this market could go very quickly in a direction that's uh, yet to be determined. So, yep. Up. Unfortunate. Um, sorry if, if people only take the low ones because this week is just, you know, so much happened this week with the Fed meeting and sorry, guys. Yeah, exactly. All right. Oh, all right. <laughs> you get yeah. The sector going? Yeah. So um, here, I'm going to pull up an article real quick. So can you talk about what J-Pow did? Yeah. So Jerome Powell is kind of like uh, he's making the first salvo, I guess, and like, you know, talking about talking about, you know, kind of having to uh, tighten up monetary policy a little bit. And uh, it's just very funny, like how cautious they are about talking about this it's like yeah i i, I don't even i'm trying to think of another good example in life it's like kind of trying to have an awkward conversation with your significant other you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly it's uh it's pretty funny but like um yeah ultimately a rising interest rate environment will benefit the banks right that's what like you know this you were going to talk about a little bit dylan i'll let you kind of help go over to your article here so um uh, this is very wordy, so I'm just going to highlight this. But essentially, if the Fed were to raise the federal fund rate by one percentage point, that's an extra $8.3 billion in net interest over uh, 12 months. This is for Bank of America. They all have their different um, rates and stuff, but Bank of America and Wells Fargo in particular are huge. And then if they just did the Treasury bond by one percentage point, that's another $2.1 billion over 12 months. Yeah. So increased rates, increased money for banks. 
Exactly. Banks make their money by like a, an interest rate spread, right? Being able to borrow at one rate and, and lend out at another. Um, and right now it's such a narrow margin, right? Like, yeah, they, they can basically get money for free and they're giving you a 3% mortgage. They can make a lot more money if, you know, they were bar- paying 3% say interest to borrow the money and making, you know, charging 7% for a mortgage. Um, yeah. I know scary 7% for mortgage is something that's hasn't been happened. hasn't happened since like, what, the ner- early 1980s, but uh, you know, you never know. It might go back there someday. Good. So, um, yeah, so the, the, the two deals here, Bank of America, I looked at all the bank stocks, like at Schwab, Wells Fargo, City, Bank of America. I looked at some regional banks and these two jumped out at me the most. Um, bank of America has a better chart. It's fallen 12% from recent highs. And I'm going to show you in the chart, but it's bouncing off the 100 SMA perfectly. And then Citigroup, much worse chart, but down 16%. And they're all relatively affected in the exact same way um, in the fact that this is most likely, to me, a little bit of market manipulation to hedge funds or something, selling off a position so they could buy at a lower price. Because when stuff drops, it drops a lot faster than when it goes up. Hmm. Um, so let's go to the charts real quick. So obviously, you know, I, I probably wouldn't take both of these. It's yeah, I'm, I'm long Bank of America, too, just for <laughs> FYI purposes. Bank of America is prettier. <laughs> So yeah. this is the 100 SMA. Um, we had this big gap here. They actually held up um, pretty well comparatively to the other banks during the sell-off. I was, I was pretty impressed. But then they had a large gap down day. So they have a, a lot of support at $34. I'm not saying they're going to get there. But if they do, that's where I would definitely go in. And then 32 with the 200 SMA. So you don't want to just buy this Monday. Right, because this could keep falling. We have no idea. Um, let me show you City. City, obviously a different chart. They've been hemorrhaging money. Um, they went straight past their 100 SMA. Their 200s at $61. Um, let me show was it Schwab is in the Schwab. Yeah, so Schwab also held up earlier. I don't know why City took such a bad hit. Yeah, like City's so, chart. City's always been like the dog of banks, you know. It's just, just so much worse. I, I finally exited my, my city uh, position. It, they always trade under book value for the most part. That's just them. They just, you know, they, they, they're constantly in like a, a reinventing themselves kind of category. And they, they just always underperform other banks. <laughs> here's here's the, the sexy part, though. Look at their RSI is at 20. <laughs> that They don't ever trade that low. Yeah. Like, what were they right here? This was 25, and then they popped all the way back up. They don't ever do that. What's that? What's BACs? Like, 20 is low, guys. What are they at? They're at 28 for Bank of America. Hmm. That's, I think mean, that's low, but it's it's not 20. So, anyways, yeah. that's, that's what we're looking at for banks. Yeah, pretty crazy. All right. We got a couple more high-risk plays, Progressive and Simon Property Group, huh? Yeah, if you if you guys remember, Progressive was on my could set up next week list. It's doing it. <laughs> All right, let me pull it up. Um, but basically, they had a monster, monster rejection candle. Um, crazy volume. Sometimes that signals a reversal. Sometimes there's a very frustrating pattern where actually, let me. Um, I'll show you on the chart. Hmm. It's gonna be too hard to. So here's the monster rejection candle. Okay, it's very obvious. <laughs> They're also at about thirty. They, you know, they do trade around this range for our side during those corrections. But this is like, you know, they were having more volume than they usually do the last two weeks, but they doubled it. So that's this is quite the candle. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, they also have pretty strong support, essentially at eighty nine ninety. So. I would probably take this if they set a new high. The reason why this is still risky is because they they still haven't been setting new highs. So lower low, lower low, lower low, low low low. You know, it's still a staircase going down with mm-hmm. the exception of this candle. Um, so you you know this is I think this is going to be a good trade, but this is still in the catching the knife category. So you got to be careful of your risk tolerance. Just because it's a high volume bar and it looks really pretty doesn't mean it's going to work out. So. 
All right. And Simon Property Group. It's not a position I'm in, actually. I got I got Dylan and them back in what like November time frame or so. We picked up some Simon Property Group. I know yeah. you sold, but I so I, I sold a couple of times. I also bought at 115 and then I sold at um 133, 132, I think. Mm -hmm. Um but same kind of deal as progressive, however, they don't really have a reason to be correcting. <laughs> Cause they're not, so it, it, it's not like banks where it could be some market manipulation. They're still not even here. Go to the chart, Vinny. Yeah, in, in theory, uh, Simon Property Group being a REIT has a lot of a lot of debt on their balance sheet that would need to be re refinanced. Uh, and then higher interest rate environment's not good for a REIT because they're gonna have to pay, pay higher interest rates on their debt. But Simon's still pretty well capitalized, at least in my opinion. Yeah, and they, they, I mean, every other stock has like almost blown past like where they were for mm -hmm. COVID highs. This is COVID. They're, they didn't even reach it yet. No. And, um, you know, this is a little bit of a risky play. Don't get me wrong, but they do respect this 50 SMA quite well. They are approaching it. They are approaching it on high volume, which is the scary part. That's why this is in the high risk category. So what you could do is, you you know, just watch, see what happens. If you, we get a full bearish bar like one of these going through this this is not a good trade just mm -hmm. let it go maybe catch around 117. <laughs> I, I think i actually yeah i bought here and i sold uh this candle boom nice um so yeah that's spg yeah i think i'm up like 30 or 40 percent somewhere in that ballpark in my position with them all right staying long and Stay long. Yeah, this is this is definitely a it was a big news to, uh, topic this week with both U.S. Steel and Freeport McMoran there. Um, I don't know if you want to pull up the charts there. I got some news articles about this. Here, go ahead and uh, do, do the news articles first. If anyone has been watching our stuff, you know that I'm a huge fan of X. It worked like five times, and it has finally failed me. <laughs> uh, so the like, kind of the news uh, headline this week was all about uh, China releasing their their copper and aluminum and zinc reserves to help stabilize prices. They're going to uh, attempt to kind of quash any speculation within the metals. Commodities have been on an absolute tear this year uh, in a combination of, you know, kind of low interest rates, inflation trade. Um, you know, the commodities have been up huge. So this this is what they the Citigroup's estimate in terms of um you know, they talk about how much China has in reserves. So 2 million tons of copper, 800,000 tons of aluminum, 300,000 tons of um, zinc based on their purchases and sales. And this is what they think they're going to release. It's only um, a couple of percent there, basically. So not expected to have a dramatic effect, I think, just from the amount that they're releasing. But the fact that they're signaling they are willing to do that is certainly a negative for commodities. Um, you also saw some strengthening of the dollar this week, right? Uh, so now you're looking at you know the, these metals and stuff like that being priced with a stronger dollar. So you're going to see some decline from that. And it was pretty broad across all commodities. Uh, I don't know if you have you seen this chart yet this week, Dylan? Yeah, I, I saw this uh, this chart here. This is a pretty interesting chart. Yeah, this was just week uh, week to date performance uh, across all these different commodities. Uh, the you know the metals. Pretty, pretty solid negative week, right? Like, you know, you don't expect something like platinum to lose 8% of its value in a week, which is insane. Um, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, exactly. The, the corn was uh, quite quite startling there. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, I am not an expert on corn futures. I know nothing about corn futures other than, you know, whiskey, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah, apparently cattle are killing it still, though. I don't know yeah. anything about this stuff, but. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, very, very interesting. So that, that was a lot of the, why you saw the movement in all of these, um, you know, kind of metal plays is because of the whole, the fact that you have, um, you know, the uh, decline in prices and companies that trade in metals are highly levered to the price of that, that, that underlying commodity. So that's where, yeah. why you saw that. All right, I got uh, I got X pulled up here. Um, so it's at the 100 SMA. It's still set in lower lows. You could look for an opportunity. Um, if you had, uh, if you followed the rules for the swing videos, then you didn't lose any money because it went way, way up. Um, I partialed a little bit. I just didn't make that much. I made like a fourth of an R, and then I lost it, and then I was at break even. The problem is I didn't realize I had call contracts in my STEM account for X, <laughs> so I'm no longer in first place. No, you still are. 
I don't, I don't think you've seen my account, Vinny. Yeah, no, Not you good. still are. Uh, my oh, my major position was a Bank of America call contract, so. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Well, we're both getting screwed here. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, still in high volume. Um, I I think that this correction is a little bit much because this is almost uh, 25% in uh, five days. So, that's a lot. There are sales tanking. Um, let me go to Freeport Morgan. Yeah. Mick Moran. Free, yeah, Freeport Mick Moran. Yeah. Um, Largest I, own copper producer in the world. Yeah, they are, they're even, what is that, $11? Yeah, it's a little less than 25%. Um, so what we're looking for when we're trying to catch a falling knife, we have these down candles, and then we have high indecision candles. We're looking for a breakout of this range, okay? That's a relatively safe way to do this. Remember, if it feels like gambling, don't do it. It's not worth it. Um, we could just wait for this to come back up above the 100 SMA and take it there. Um these are probably too low for all the stuff that's happening. Another uh, one that I had people watching last week was Home Depot. I thought it was going to make the list, Vinny, but it didn't. No. No, it's still set in lower lows. It's still in a pretty solid downtrend, and hmm. it's been on that way for a while. We did have a really high rejection candle, so you could watch to see what happens in this range, but don't take it against the nine daily EMA. So we're gonna have to watch to see what happens. I've been helping out your Home Depot share, you know, potential profit here with a bunch of purchases. So, oh, I, I didn't have they actually never set up. I never took the trade. Well, when you do. <laughs> oh, perfect. Um, this is no one take this. I'm just gonna start off by saying that this is uh, three times leverage daily bull. It's kind of the same thing as uh, as this. Um, this one's just even crazier. Uh, don't take this. <laughs> okay. With that being said, I might take this. Um, <laughs> I'm looking for it to hit around the 130 range. I'm looking for it to plummet through the 200 SMA, and then I might throw a pretty uncomfortable amount of money at it. So. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, it's going to be one stupid guy and one homeless guy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's possible. <laughs> All right. Go to the uh, yeah. the recap. Stuff. Yeah, we I made a bunch of moves this week. Um, so Vinny, if you want to hover over like the green exit positions, so if you notice, Calyx, Oxy, Nvidia, all at the bottom. Mm. Um, I, I closed my X, my Calyx, and my Oxy. They're all mm. out. Nice. Um, Nvidia, I moved over. I thought it was just it's just getting up there. Um, remember, mm. I did not take this trade. I was out of capital. Mm. Um, and then I entered SQ, which I recommended last week. Killing it already. It's already up one and a half R-ish and A, B, and B. Um, also slightly above where I recommend it. Not a lot. Um, and then Apple's at 2R. Snap's doing pretty well. Nice. Um, I did not. I accidentally did not have a stop loss in MU. And MU tanked. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. That uh, tends to happen from time to time, doesn't it, Dylan? Uh, I, I really thought I had one on all of them, but I'm doing like three different accounts since like, oh, crap, I didn't have it in this one. Oh, boy. And that's, yeah. yeah, it sucks. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you guys in the next one. All right. Have a good one, guys.